We're at Renishaw in Miskin. Now straight away you're probably thinking CMM, style eye, equator gauge, even 3D printing as examples. A huge amount of stuff, 4,000 across the world if not more. How many machines you got at this side? At this side we've got about 85 CNC machines. Oh, so you're showing off a bit there, but what we're here to do is find out about your suite of citizens. Just quickly, how many have you got here and how many in total? Uh, we've got 23 machines on this site and 58 in total. Impressive stuff. So, first of all, latest acquisition, they're B12s. So, latest acquisition, you've got six, six B12s in total, of which you bought three recently. Yeah. Why do you like them so much? Um, they're reliable machines. We've got um, a lot of them, so we, they need to be consistent and reliable. We um, require quite a lot of important surface finish and dimensional tolerances, so they produce that reliably and consistently. Okay, so essentially, you know, you've got bar, three meter bar feeds on all the machines, you can leave these running 24 seven, know that they're gonna come off. Any intervention afterwards in terms of cleaning, surface finish? Um, so some processes are required afterwards on some parts, but a lot of our parts just come off complete. Yeah. Um, they're clean, just to remove the oil, and, and then they're ready for assembly. Um, so, I mean, how many parts are you making a year? Um, this line, we're making about two and a half million parts a year on this line of citizens, right. so quite a lot of parts. So keeping those processes nice and straightforward and no other operator intervention key, I should imagine. Yeah, keeping our um, operator input down to a minimum, keeping, uh, keep, helps keep our costs down and, and consistent, reliable processes are important. And what I'd like to do is just have a quick look at some of the parts you're making on the B12s, if I may. So we've got some we prepared earlier. Um, yeah, so there's uh, fairly simple parts we make on these B12s, um, but we've got a lot of uh, grooving, turning, yeah. um, threading, um, some broaching in the end of this part as well. So, um, you know, quite a bit going on, but all fairly simple in a, in a, in a way to start so with. So this is, this is all, tur all turning, any driven tooling? Yeah, we got a, a couple of cross-driven tools on this machine, so we can do a bit of little cross-milling. So this has got yeah. some flats that are milled on the side, yeah. so we make that complete on here as well. Okay. Now another part you've got here, which is really showcasing what you mentioned about surface finish. Yeah, so a lot of our products are going out straight to a customer. Um, they're going to see the machine finished. Um, so the surface finish on outside faces are important. Yeah. So um, this part comes off complete with that finish and there's no subsequent finishing operations to improve that. So we're reliant on the machine to give us a consistent surface finish um, so the customer, that the customer sees. And you say consistency, you know, you've got, just confirm, how many machines across the group? Uh, we've got 58, 58. citizen machines here. Yeah. Okay. So that, you have to have that, that's why we've got that whole suite of citizens, they're giving you that consistency. Yeah, so it, because they're all, citizens we know that if we're moving parts between machines we're going to get the same reliable results. Okay next machines then K16s. But one thing I want to actually just cover off is footprint in the machines because you, you do have a huge site here and across the group but footprint can be an issue? Yeah having the smaller machines does mean they can we can get them close together and we have outgrown our machine shop in the past right. so um, keeping the machines small means that we're less likely to do that in the right. future. So you get that that with the citizen machine which is key to what you require? Yeah that's correct yeah. So the K16's here, clearly bigger bar, but what else extra do you get from these machines? Um, so they've got a few more driven tool positions, which helps with a bit more milling work. Um, they're a bit quicker, they're a bit more, uh, hold the tolerances a bit better, so they're good all round machines for that size apart. And as is usual, what we're gonna do is ask you about components and manufacturing. So here is one, or one of many thousands you prepared earlier. If you want, just want to talk me through this one. Yeah, so th this is a small part we make, which has got both um, turning and milling features on it. It's got cross milling. Um, uh, and we've got quite, quite tight tolerances on some of the um, milled features. Yep. So that's a key feature of the part. Um, we've also got, again, a surface finish that we require to be looking good, because it's a customer finish face. And again, this part has um, very little operations afterwards, so it's cleaned. And, and done. Okay. So the part is coming off is complete basically. Right. So two, two points that I'm getting along the line here is A, surface finish is key and also operator intervention during the manufacture but also subsequent it doesn't need any, anything else doing to it. Yeah that's correct. It, trying to keep the number of operations down keeps our costs down. The number of operators across the machines keeps the costs down. So. Right. Okay. so that's a K16s. What next? We'll look at the A series next. Clearly these are bigger bar, but before we do that, I just want to find out about the F-Series machines. So we've got um, some F-Series machines on this site and we've had them in production since the mid 80s. So they're, you know, reliable machines for a long period and Renish has got a long history with running with Citizen machines. So great endorsement of, you know, long running and also the relationship with Citizen. So 
A32s though, tell me about what you're doing on these machines. So these machines are obviously, like I said, bigger than the K-series, but they've got a few more driven tool positions as well. Um, and they're much more rigid, stronger machines. So we can do a bit more heavier machining right. uh, and get into the guts of the thing a bit more. Okay, so the bigger cut. So a great example here is, is this component? Yeah, so we've got a component here where we've got quite a lot of machining to take out the middle. That doesn't take a lot of time to take right. out that, the hulk of that, but we've still got all the, the features of the cross milling and the face milling to give us the complexity in the part. Yeah. And we've got a lot of, uh, different turned parts on it as well so okay. quite a complicated part. And another example you got there hidden away? Yeah so although these are bigger machines we do make smaller parts on them sometimes. Um, this one's got quite a lot of face milling it gives us that ability and um, with some quite tied up tolerances on hole positions um, but we can make this part fairly quickly on these machines. Right okay. Now one thing these parts are all sort of relatively short but concentricity is key on these machines as well, is that right? Yeah, some of our parts have quite tied up concentricity between faces, so um, these machines do give us that ability to produce those features within required tolerances. And last but not least, the M32s. So, how do these machines differ to the A32s? Obviously they make a similar size part, yep. but on these machines we've got a lot more tooling, and they've actually got a turret with a large number of tooling, giving us a lot more milling options and, and different things we can make. Okay. So I'm going to reiterate then, surface finish, concentricity, accuracy, reliability, repeatability. Yep, they're all important. It goes across the line and by having the citizens across the line, we know when we move from one platform to another, we're getting the similar sort of results. Okay. Now again, I'd like to have a look at what the parts you're making. So here's one, another one you prepared earlier. Yeah. So here's a little part we're making on here. As you can see, there's quite a lot of like cross milling features to it. We've even got milling on the end. Um, but the amount of milling on this part exceeds some of our other platforms' capability to mill them, and hence why it's on these machines, even though it still remains quite a small diameter okay. part. Yeah. So how would you summarize why you like Citizen so, so much? Um, we've obviously got a long-standing relationship with Citizen, and we've had them for a long time. By having a line of all Citizen machines mean we've got a consistency of approach. Um, we've got the same machines on multiple sites, which means we can transfer production between two different sites and get the same results. We get the reliability we want, we get the dimensional tolerances we want, and we get the surface finishes we want. So the whole package together gives us exactly what we want. So there it is, a great insight into Renishaw PLC, which is a global company being supported by Citizen Machinery UK.